Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Aquarium of the Pacific's Aquarium Online Academy. We're broadcasting live from Long Beach, California today. My name is Emily, and I'm a member of our education team. I'm also joined here by Amanda, who is uh, switching in the studio for us, and then I have Stacy, who will be taking your questions. So if you have any questions during our Draw With Me session, feel free to text us if you are watching this live. So we'll put the number right here for you. We're happy to answer your questions uh, at any time during our 30 minute broadcast. Your questions can be texted to 562-286-1838. If by chance you're watching this on YouTube, it's an old recording, feel free to email us as well. Uh, where you are always checking that. And that email address is live, L-I-V-E, at L-B-A-O-P dot org. So that's live at L-B, AOP, Long Beach Aquarium of Pacific.org. All right, great. So today we're going to be drawing a really special habitat or a place where animals make their home. What I want to do is I want to invite you to my ocean backyard. Now here in Southern California, we live, we're really lucky, we live right by the Pacific Ocean here. And maybe you don't live close to the ocean. Maybe you're uh, watching from some place like Oklahoma City. Maybe you're in Maryland. Maybe you're, we had a viewer this morning all the way from uh, Israel. So we have viewers from all over. Well, I want to invite you to my backyard here. And this is what my backyard looks like. This is a kelp forest habitat. Now here in Southern California, we're really, really lucky because this is what it looks like here. We're one of the very few places where this stuff grows. Now you might say, what is that? Take a close look. Does this look like anything you've seen before? Hmm. Are some of you calling out what you think it is? You're right. This is seaweed. This is a really special kind of seaweed called kelp. Now, kelp doesn't grow everywhere in the world, but it does happen to grow here, like I mentioned. We have all the right sort of combination of conditions for kelp to grow. And when it grows, it grows and grows and grows. So it can be really, really tall. So the picture that you're looking at here, uh, it isn't particularly zoomed in or anything. They really do get very, very tall. I think of this in a lot of ways, kind of like a rainforest in the ocean in my backyard, which is amazing to think about. And because this seaweed is able to grow, 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 it provides a great habitat for animals. And uh, these are animals that live on it, live off of it. Um, some of them will use it as a nursery ground. Um, and it's a great place for hunting and all sorts of things for these animals um, to make their livelihoods. So uh, we're going to take a closer look at it today and we're going to draw it. I happen to have over on the side here, I happen to have a whiteboard and markers. Uh, but anytime, you can grab anything that you got at home to color or draw with as well. You can use paper, you can use a whiteboard. If you've got an easel, you can use that. Um, if you like painting, you can try and do that. You can use any medium you like, pencils, pens, crayons, markers. You can use finger paint, paint sticks, whatever you like, whatever you've got around at home and you can try and explore this habitat with me and let's try and draw it as we explore it. All right, so let's take a look right now. Amanda, if you can show us, what does a kelp forest uh, look like? Maybe here at the aquarium, we'll start with the very bottom of the kelp forest. This is a live look at our blue cavern habitat. Oh, I see a diver too. That's kind of lucky that we were able to come in and take a look while we still had a diver in there. What do you notice, though, in this habitat? So take a look for just a moment. We're going to start adding these things that we notice. Oh, that was really cool. Uh, the shark, the leopard shark that just swam by. But what else do you notice? What are the parts of this bit, uh, window that you see right now that aren't the animals? What else do you see other than animals here? Let's try and add some of that. So call out right now to those in the room with you, what are the things that you notice in this view? I see sand, I see some really big rocks, and off of those rocks, I happen to see some seaweed. And these happen to be kelps right here, all different types of kelp. So let's go ahead and go to our drawing board and uh, we'll start adding some of these elements to our picture here. Now. As I mentioned, I happen to have um, a camera that faces down on my drawing board right here. Mine happens to be a whiteboard, but like I said at home, you can use anything that you've got. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add 
the ground right here. Our ground here was sand, but don't forget we did have sand and we also had some really big rocks. So let's go ahead and I, because I can erase it, I'm going to, but um, don't worry if you don't have the ability to erase. You can just use whatever you've got. Um, I'm gonna draw some big rocks over here. And maybe a rock over here. Here. They were starting to look all like meatballs to me. So I'm trying to. There. So we have some rocks here. I'm going to shade them in so they look a little bit darker since I don't have um, other colors right now. If you've got other colors, though, you can add. Go ahead and do that. So I'm going to shade these just a little bit so I know that they're rocks. I'm going to add some texture to my sand, too. I've got some really big rocks in my kelp forest. All right, and I'm going to add some more sand here. Now, um, we're already getting qu questions, so that's great. So um, we got a question from Oliver. What is the bright orange fish we see in the kelp forest? So let's, let's see if we can spot it right now. Let's go back. Uh, oh, well, this is a great picture of one. Great observation, Oliver. I'm glad you noticed this because this is a zoomed in version, so it's really, really big. But this fish is the California marine state fish. Um, this is the Garibaldi. It's actually, um, when they're sort of, they're little, they're a little bit smaller than the size of my hand. And as they get to be adults, um, they're maybe about a, about a foot long or so. And this is California state marine fish, as I mentioned. So let's add a Garibaldi to our habitat here. Um, let's take a look to, I think Amanda's going to try and find us a picture right here. See if you spot a bright orange fish in this view right here. Uh, so this is a sort of we rewound in the camera here. You can see a diver that's feeding the exhibit. And so that little bike bottle, that squeezable plastic bike bottle is filled with food. Um, and the diver <laughs> just waved to us, but squished in some food. The fish came over. Oh, it looks like those are only sardines. Oh, but in the very back, you can see that Garibaldi. Oh, and there's another one over, over on the far side right there. Great observations. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add to our picture. Let's add some of these Garibaldi, these beautiful Garibaldi, and then we'll go ahead and add the rest of the kelp there. So, um, all right, I'm going to add a Garibaldi kind of up here. Now, Garibaldi, when we draw it, draw something first that looks like a little football because that's their basic shape, right? If you can and you have an eraser or you're using a um, a pencil or something. So at the end of your football, go ahead and open up that football again and you can add a little sideways heart because that's what a Garibaldi's tail looks like. It actually has a heart-shaped tail and then they have a really long fin on the top and a little short fin. If you have uh, the ability to color in, I do not, but if you do, you can go ahead and also make that, that bright orange color right there. So Amanda's going to switch on and show you the picture once again so you can see it. Um, you can see that beautiful dark, dark orange color. And it has that heart-shaped tail. And uh, it's actually football-shaped and has that heart-shaped tail. My friend Stacy brought me a color. So I can actually try and color it in here. So I'm going to go ahead and color. This might be the only, the only actual other color that I get today. But... Here, I'm coloring in my brightly colored Garibaldi. Now, you might ask, why, why might something like that be brightly colored? That's a really good question. Now, a lot of times um, when fish are brightly colored, they are brightly colored and it helps them out in a lot of different ways. Now, in the case of the Garibaldi, the Garibaldi is what we call a territorial fish, which means it likes its space and it will do whatever it can to protect its space. So sometimes our divers uh, or divers that are out in the ocean will be just diving along or snorkeling along and swimming through, and then a Garibaldi might pop right out at them because the Garibaldi will do whatever it can to protect its space. They're just really territorial. So uh, Garibaldi's 
do that, they, they can be pretty aggressive. This is another view of, uh, the, of their, oh, you can see them right here, right there, and, and then all the way across there. They keep sort of home territories. So the Garibaldi, um, as I mentioned, it's territorial and it's brightly colored just to let, let, let others know, hey, I'm here and this is my territory. It's really interesting though, the baby Garibaldis are that same orange color, but they have these brilliant blue spots on them. And the brilliant blue spots tell other Garibaldis, don't pick on me, I'm just a little one. And so in that way, um, they're able to be a little less aggressive to some of those, uh, the, the babies of their kind. All right. And here's a picture of a baby, uh, a, a young Garibaldi right here. And you can see that it has these brilliant um, blue spots on them. Um, Penny asks a really good question. Do fish see colors? Now, different fish ha might have different types of vision and it really depends on their lifestyle. So um, some fish, for example, like a mudskipper that looks both above air and then in, into water have really different eyeballs than other fish. Um, so it really just depends. Uh, and, and that's actually true with most all, all animals. Um, they're, they're vision or whether or not they have color vision depends on their need for vision. Um, and still other animals that have this bright coloration, they might see each other differently than we do. Um, and so it, it really just depends. So some of them do um, have uh, some spectrum that they can see and some of them and others see um, black and white and yet others see other animals will actually see in spectra that we can't even see. So uh, great question though. Um, all right, we're going to go back to the drawing board here and see if we can add stuff. So we've added the sand. You can go ahead and color that that yellow or tan color. I've added some big rocks. I'm going to go ahead and add some seaweed or kelp. Now, when I draw kelp, there's a couple of different parts to kelp. So um, let's uh, get ready. Actually, you know what? I'm going to switch over and I'm going to show you an artificial kelp. And then maybe we can draw that out and then we'll add it to our drawing. So I'm going to come over here. I actually have a piece of artificial kelp. Um, so this is very similar to actually what we have on exhibit right here. And we're going to draw something like this on our drawing board in just a second. But if you look at the bottom of this artificial kelp, we have something that looks kind of like, almost like a tree roots, right? Um, and so it works a little differently than tree roots um, because this is not a plant. Even though it looks like a plant, um, this is actually in a completely different kingdom. They do act like plants though. So they photosynthesize, they collect sunlight, nutrients, carbon dioxide and water, and then they photosynthesize their own food. Um, so they have something that looks like tree roots, but this is called a hold fast. And this is actually the part that anchors to a rock and it holds them fast. So um, this part you would see if you were out there in my ocean backyard, you would see a piece of kelp held down to the rock. So they need rocks by this hold fast. The hold fast can actually provide spaces for animals uh, to live in too. The next thing that you'll notice is this really, really long stem. Look at all the stems that are uh, gently swaying by me right here. The stem is called a stipe. And it goes all the way, it runs the entire length, like a big old line in the middle, all the way up. And you can see that right here. There's big central uh, stems or stipes that go all the way up. And then we have all the leaves or what we call blades on this. And so we have um, off of the central stipe or stem right here, we have different blades. You'll also notice that at the base of each blade, there's a little balloon right here. The balloon is called a pneumatocyst, but I think of it, it works just like a balloon. It helps to hold that seaweed up. And you can see that's how they're able to stay supported and standing up because they want to be closer to the sunlight. Um, and once again, that's because they photosynthesize just like plants do. All right, so we have the seaweed that we're gonna add. So let's go ahead and add that. And then um, I'm going to take some questions here. So um, I'm going to add my hold fast first. You'll remember the hold fast looked kind of like an upside down, um, almost like a big suction cup but it had little squiggles on it. Um, so we have the hold fast right here. I'm gonna redraw mine, actually. I'm gonna add it kind of like this. So I'll add mine like a squiggle. 
And then we've got a big long line. Remember, that's that central stipe. It sort of curls at the end. And then remember, off that central stem, we had lots of little, the little balloons and the leaves. And that is the pneumatocyst and the blades right there. And so you can go ahead and kind of like you're going up a ladder, go ahead and add the blades of kelp to your, the central stem or stipe. And um, I'm going to have some in the back. And then I'm going to go ahead and add on the other side. So a lot of these at the top, I'm going to just sort of do just the I accidentally rubbed off some of the orange from my Garibaldi here. Let's recolor the Garibaldi. All right, so I have one piece of kelp. I might do the next one a little bit um, more freehand. So that's one way that you can draw it. If it's easier for you to just draw lines, you can do the exact same thing, just drawing lines. So let's draw like a little shaggy triangle right here. And then we can do the exact same thing. Just draw the center like a big line and then do a circle and a leaf. A circle and a leaf. Just all the way up like this. Um, if that's easier for you, that's totally a good way to draw them too. You can color them along as you go. You don't have to do it exactly like how I did. There's other seaweeds too. Um, and if we go back to the Blue Cavern camera, you can actually see that we've got a couple of different seaweed types. Um, they're all leafy. And if you look right now, um, you can see some of them are short, some of them are tall. Um, so there's all different types. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add one wiry looking one in the very front of my drawing board. Um, but it's going to be kind of like the same thing where I have, it looks like a plant sort of, um, where I just have a couple of blades right there. All right. So we're starting to build in this habitat here. Oh, let me move my eraser because it's really big. So we have our sand. We have some rocks. We're starting to add the kelp that goes in our kelp forest. Now, I did get a couple of great questions. Leah wants to know, what is the gray fish with spots? If it's the gray fish with a white spot on the top, that's called an opali. Um, we have some other sort of grayish fish that have more like, it looks like a, a blackish spot, like right behind their operculum. That's, those are the flaps on the sides that cover their gills. Um, that uh, is... A blacksmith, half moon, I'm sorry, that, that's a half moon. Um, and then we have some, we might have blacksmith in there too. Oh, this is one of my favorites right here. This one right here is a California sheephead. So um, I also got another question from Sonia. Uh, Sonia wants to know, why do the orange Garibaldi have blue spots? As a reminder, those are just the little, the baby Garibaldis, the very young Garibaldis. They have the blue spots. Um, my understanding is that the blue spots help them communicate that uh, they are they are younger fish right and so um, for a territorial fish um, it might be more distinctive for them to see when there's young of their species in the area um, just because they look a little bit different all right um, I also got a quick uh, sh I'm, I've been asked to do a quick shout out to Penny and Jake in Torrance. So thanks for tuning in, Penny and Jake in Torrance. All right, so let's have another look at our kelp forest habitat here. We've got rocks. We started to add some seaweed to our, uh, to our habitat. I added a Garibaldi. Um, let's see what else. Oh, there's kind of, there's a bunch of different fish. Should we add, should we do a sheep head? Should we try to do a sheep head? Yeah, let's try and do a sheep head. I don't know that I've ever drawn one before, but 
I'm going to try, everybody. So um, let's look at what we notice about the sheep's head first. So what shape do you see here? Hmm. I sort of see what looks like a really long football shape. There's a lot of fish that are that shape. That's called fusiform. And uh, if you think about it, what uh, if you think about a lot of things that live in the ocean or that work in the ocean, like a submarine or torpedoes, those are all football shaped but really, really long. Same thing with a lot of fish. And that's just because that shape is really what we call hydrodynamic. So it's really good at moving through the water. Now, um, here we have, it's sort of football shaped but long, right? It looks like somebody stretched out uh, a football. We also notice some really distinctive things like this big white chin. And then we notice it has sort of a black part on its face. It's got like a pinkish middle and sort of a darker part on its back. All right. So let's see if we can draw it. Oh, let's do one more thing too. Um, let's look at the tail. The tail is sort of flat on the end right here. So if you look, it, it looks like a normal fish tail, but instead of like a V or a fork, it's just flat on the end. So let's go ahead and add that to our picture right here. I'm going to put it sort of in the middle um, and I'm going to do, so I said it's a, like a long football. And actually, Amanda, if I can go back and look at that picture just for another minute, and maybe our friends at home could use the picture too. I'm going to draw a long football um, and it's actually got uh, a really distinctive looking head. So it's sort of a shorter head. Okay. Um, all right, we can switch back to the drawing board. And uh, it's got a long fin on the top. Um, and remember, we said it had a little white chin. Um, it has a black head. And it had sort of blackish part of the back part of it. So this is our sheep head. Um, this happens to be a male sheep head. I know that because it's got the black, red, black, and it's got the little white chin on it. Um, maybe I'll try and do, I was gonna see if I can do an eye on it. Here, I'll, I'll leave a little, one little spot for the eye right there. Um, so you can see, and it's got actually some fins on the bottom. Um, this is our sheep head. I wish my marker didn't I guess that's what happens with whiteboard markers. They, uh, they sort of self erase a little bit. Let me try and, yeah. If you wanna take a better look at that sheep head, it's got a black head, a little white chin, um, and the back half of it is also black. Oh, actually I'm gonna add to my picture here. And I'm gonna, col I colored it in a little bit better so you can see more distinctively um, those colors there. All right. So um, actually, I'm going to try and add a red to it as well, because um, I happen to have, we actually do have a red marker. I'm going to go ahead and make this middle part red. All right, so that is a male sheep head. Um, the females look a little bit different than that. And it turns out um, with some fish, the males and females actually do look distinctive. Um, the male sheep head is really, really easy to spot. The female sheep head has the same exact shape, and she even has the little white chin. She just happens to be sort of a grayish pink color. Um, so we can always spot when there's a sheep head. Those, that little chin is really, really distinctive. All right, I got a couple of other great questions here. Um, Delfina in New York, welcome to, from New York, um, wants to know why is seaweed good for the ocean? That's a great question. So seaweed's great for the ocean for a lot of reasons. First of all, we can see one main reason here. Oh, that is a female sheep head right there. You can see she's got a little white chin. Um, we see it provides a habitat for these animals. Uh, and so that's really important for us. Um, I mean, especially here, we like to show you what our ocean backyard looks like. But there's so many more reasons why seaweed is good for the ocean. Do you remember? I said it's not a plant, but it acts like a plant. It's very plant-like, which means it photosynthesizes. And photosynthesizers, they take in carbon dioxide and they produce oxygen. So seaweeds um, do produce oxygen. They don't actually produce as much oxygen that we breathe. Um, most of the oxygen that we breathe comes from planktonic 
photosynthesizers. But that's another good thing about, photo, um, about seaweeds is that at least they provide that function. The other amazing thing is we happen to use seaweeds and um, we use products rather derived from seaweeds all the time. Now, some of you that eat sushi and things like that, um, you might have had nori, which is like the stuff that they wrap um, seaweed, the seaweed that they used to wrap uh, sushi in. Um, but there's more than that. We actually uh, farm or people farm seaweed and we use the products from seaweed and they actually create emulsifiers. Um, and so the, those algae are used, um, are farmed for that purpose. And the emulsifiers um, make things like they're an additive that make things really smooth and silky, um, almost like creamy tasting or feeling rather. Um, so we use seaweed in that way. And in fact, a lot more people are starting to farm seaweed because it turns out people like to, to eat seaweed even. So um, there's lots of different reasons why seaweed is uh, good and it's more than just a habitat for animals. Um, Lucas wants to know, are there any bluefish in the exhibit? If so, what's its name? Um, we do not have any uh, bluefish in the exhibit right now that I know of. Um, but if you see a fish that you really like, you're welcome to name it if you like. Go ahead and, and spot a fish that you that that's really interesting to you, you can add it to your picture and you can name it whatever you like, which I think is one of the really fun things about being creative. Um, also, um, the silver, a lot of these fish are grayish silver and so that might be why they appear blue um, is just because of the way that we have it lit inside the exhibit and the way that the camera is short, sort of showing them. Uh, Nicole wants to know, do all the fish eat seaweed? Now, actually, most of these fish, none of these fish can eat this seaweed. This seaweed that's on exhibit is artificial. Um, there are fish that do nip uh, on seaweed or they'll eat things that grow on seaweed. Um, but a lot of these fish actually eat, uh, well, it depends. Some of them eat other fish um, or we'll feed them like a specific diet too. Um, and we'll supplement them with pellets and things like that as well. So. Um, yeah, so if you look here, I'll move. Oh, there's a nice, a beautiful leopard shark swimming through the view. We can see right here, this is um, some footage of a diver who is taking a squeeze bottle once again and feeding some of our smaller fish. This is our schooling fish right here, sardines. Um, and so uh, they eat little planktonic foods. Um, and I actually also think they might feed them blood worms too or something like that. So they'll feed them little things. If they've got little mouths, they'll feed them little foods or they'll chop up um, diet as well. They'll chop up other, other um, fish and shrimp and things like that. So it becomes kind of like a, a, a paste or a meal and then they'll pump it, spray it out into the um, exhibit and then the fish come and eat it. So there's lots of different diets. Um, as you can imagine in any habitat, there are always some animals that eat the, um, the bottom of the food chain and it goes all the way up. Um, Abigail wanted to know, are there unicorn fish in this exhibit? Uh, not in this exhibit because unicorn fish are, a, um, are actually a tropical species. Now there's one thing I was actually hoping to add to my uh, kelp forest and we'll do that uh, in just a, a minute. We're gonna, I'm going to actually extend my kelp forest or maybe I'll make it diving down. Um, yeah, as we finish up, I'm actually going to add, we don't have this inside of Blue Cavern, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add an otter because there are some otters that live in um, some kelp forest habitats too. So if you've ever wanted to draw an otter, where I'm going to have Amanda put an otter up really quick, and then I'm going to show you really quick the easiest way to draw an otter. So um, Amanda, if you get a chance, you'll notice otters have a kind of circle-shaped head, and look at the shape of their nose. It's a diamond shape. So we're gonna draw a circle, a diamond nose. Um, they've got two eyes and some beautiful whiskers. They've got a really long body. And notice what you see about, they've got little paws in the front and they've got flippers and a tail in the back. So real quick, watch them swim. And then I'm gonna see if I can show you how to draw the world's fastest otter drawing to add to your kelp forest habitat. Here's one of our otters on exhibit, you can see um, that's how they move around. This is how they swim on their backs, and this one happens to be eating. All right, so let's really quickly add an otter to our habitat right here. So remember, 
They have a circle shaped face and I'm going to draw this like a fuzzy circle. Um, so I'll make mine dotted. Okay. Remember they have a diamond shaped nose. So you can go ahead and do that. Um, and it's on a snout. So I'm going to add a smaller fuzzy circle right here. They have, oops, I'm not really sure I love that eye, but they have uh, um, two eyes. Okay. So they have that diamond shaped nose. They have two eyes. We have two fuzzy circles. And I'm going to make our otter, our otter is going to wave to you. They don't actually wave in real life, but for our, the purposes of our, uh, of our cartoon, we'll have them wave to you. Here's our otter swimming by. And they have flippers in the back. And then they have a little tail. And then I'll add its whiskers. All right, there we go. We have our little otter. I'm going to add two teeny little ears on the sides too. So that is the fastest otter you've ever drawn. It's two circles, a diamond shaped nose and some eyes and a long body. Um, and this one happens to be waving. Um, all right, so uh, one last question that we got from Dane. Dane asked, what is your favorite fish to draw? Um, I actually, I love to draw sharks. Um, so maybe as we close up, uh, I will add one more thing. I'm going to add a leopard shark to our habitat. So sharks are football shaped, um, except really long footballs. And I'm going to add this leopard shark on the bottom. So here is a leopard shark. It's a really long football. And then they've got a little uh, stemmy tail like that. They've got two fins on the top. So there's two triangles. And then they've got um, they're sort of like airplane wings, um, <laughs> pectoral fins, um, and leopard sharks have these rings on the top of them. So go ahead and add like U shapes to them. I'll go ahead and add a smile and a face on that one. Um, all right, so that is our leopard shark there. So here we have a kelp forest habitat. I want to thank you for joining us today. Welcome to my ocean backyard. I'd love to see pictures of your ocean backyard. Feel free to text that in to us if you have any final pictures. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks for drawing with me today. Bye, everybody.